In this video, we dive into the world of Tailwind CSS, the popular styling framework. And we will replace the default Bootstrap CSS framework within the Blazor project template. While this website is not picture perfect, I'm no CSS expert nor a Tailwind CSS expert. It will be a journey where we integrate Tailwind CSS into the new .NET 8 Blazor web app project template. Watching this step-by-step -step guide on how to integrate Tailwind CSS with Blazor will not only allow you to understand how the different parts play together, but also help you if you need to troubleshoot any issues in the future. And with all that, you'll be set to build stunning looking and very well designed user interfaces with Tailwind CSS and Blazor. Now, let's start by creating a new Blazor web app based on the new .NET 8 project template. We choose .NET 8, no authentication, configure HTTPS and select auto as the interactive render mode and per page component as the interactivity location. These settings will generate a WebAssembly project, allowing me to demonstrate using Tailwind CSS in the server and client projects. We include the sample pages and create the project. Starting with version 3 of Tailwind CSS, it uses a just-in-time compiler looking at the source code of your application. It means that Tailwind will only generate the CSS code required by the classes used within your application source code. The compiler is part of the CLI. We can either use a node-based or a standalone CLI. If you're familiar with Node, it might be the better option. However, I want this approach to be independent of Node and therefore we download the standalone CLI. In my case, I download the Windows x64 version. When the download is completed, we need to move the file into a location that we can reach from a console. I like having my tools close to the projects and will use the following structure. Within the top-level folder that was generated by Visual Studio, we find the project folder and the solution file. Here, I create a Tailwind folder and move the Tailwind CLI into that folder. With that approach, you have a close relationship between the Tailwind CLI and your project. However, make sure to ignore the executable within your git ignore settings. An alternative approach would be to store the CLI outside of the project folder structure. Next, we need to set up the Tailwind CSS configuration file. We use the Tailwind CSS CLI and execute the init command from within the project folder where we want the config file. In my case, I use the server project of the Blazor application. The generated config file looks similar to other configuration files common in the JavaScript and TypeScript world. The basic configuration contains the content, theme and plugins properties. We need to change the content property to include the path to all the Razor, HTML and CSHTML files within the server, the client and any other project folders. Next. We need a CSS file as the source of our Tailwind CSS style sheets. We create the new folder styles within the server project and add a tailwind-app.css file. The content is Tailwind CSS specific. We add the following definition that adds the base, components and utilities packages. When the application runs, we want to load the CSS at runtime. We will talk about how to generate the CSS file shortly. But first, let's open the app.razor file and add the following line to reference the tailwind-app.css file from the www root folder. Before we can generate Tailwind CSS code, we need to use Tailwind CSS in our application. I replace the generic text on the home page with the following HTML template. Here, we use a few basic Tailwind CSS classes. We set the text size to 4XL, the font weight to bold and the font style to underlined. Now, we are ready to generate the Tailwind CSS file. 
We use the Tailwind CSS CLI within the folder of the server project and execute the following command. It references the Tailwind CSS CLI from within its top level folder. The dash i argument references the input file and the dash o argument the output file. The watch option starts a file watcher. Instead of running once, the CLI keeps running and whenever we make a code change, it will regenerate the CSS output file. We will see it in action shortly. Now that we have everything configured, let's run the application. As you can see, we see a formatted text on the homepage of the component. When we use the dev tools, we see our Tailwind CSS classes applied to the div element. In the sources tab of the dev tools, we also see that the tailwind-app.css file was loaded. The application shown at the beginning of this video looks slightly different. The reason is that in this project we still have bootstrap, whereas I removed it completely in the project shown at the beginning of this video. I don't want to bother you with the details on how to remove bootstrap from the default project template in this video. However, you'll find a link in the video description to the cleaned up project where it only contains Tailwind CSS. Now, let's change the code on the counter page to see if we can also use Tailwind CSS in client-side executed WebAssembly components. I insert the following code. We use a similar set of classes to format the text and I also added a few classes to format the button using Tailwind CSS instead of Bootstrap. Let's start the application again. We navigate to the counter page and as you can see, the button is styled using Tailwind CSS, meaning it also works for client-side components using WebAssembly. Now, let's see how a typical workflow looks like when using Tailwind CSS within a Blazor application. Let's quickly make a change to one of the existing components. When I save the files, we see that the Tailwind CSS CLI has rebuilt the CSS file. When I press the hot reload button in Visual Studio, we see the changes reflected in the browser. As you can see, this allows us to work pretty quickly and make changes to the code and instantly see the results in the browser. This workflow should be similar to using TypeScript or JavaScript based frameworks using tools such as WIT. The similar experience should be possible with Blazor. If you want to gradually introduce Tailwind CSS into a project that uses a different CSS styling framework, such as Bootstrap, you can use a prefix. In the tailwind.config.js file, you can add the prefix property and assign a string value, such as tw- However, when you do so, we also need to use that prefix on all CSS classes we add to our components. For example, text-4xl is now tw-text-4xl. This makes the CSS class definitions even longer. And if you later want to remove Bootstrap, you have to refactor all the CSS classes in your whole application. Or you'll be forever stuck on using the prefix. So if it's possible, I wouldn't recommend using the prefix option. We added Tailwind CSS to a newly created Blazor application based on .NET 8. We used the standalone Tailwind CSS CLI to generate the CSS on demand. The watch command allows us to regenerate the CSS whenever we make a code change and therefore see the changes reflected in the browser instantly. You find a link to the GitHub repository down in the video description. It includes all the necessary setup steps shown in this video. I wouldn't mind a star on the repository if you think it's helpful. If you enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like and if you want to learn more about .NET development in the future, consider subscribing to the channel and I will see you in the next video.